the evisceration of Maddie Powellette continues. You'll need to watch part one if you haven't. It's linked in the description. Roll title card, then let's dive right in. Claim 6. The majority of the LGBTQ community hates God. But the greater crowd within the LGBT community, they have hated God so much that God finally gave them over to a reprobate mind. This is proof that God does give people over to a reprobate mind, and you know what that means? That God, they hated God so much. They hated our Lord Jesus Christ so much that God finally took the limiter off of them and turned them into an animal. An animalistic person. You know, that's why the Bible calls them dogs. That's serious. Maddie likes to make the LGBTQ community out to be a god-hating conglomerate of organized orgy enjoyers. But a 2018 survey of 880 self-identified LGBTQ Americans gave information starkly contrasting with Maddie's characterization. I'll let the results of that survey speak for themselves. Quote, Bisexual people said they are having more sex than their gay, lesbian, and queer peers. 29% of bisexual people report having sex once or twice a week, and 15% of them several times per week. 18% of gay people have sex once or twice a week, and 14% have it several times per week. Lesbians reported having the least sex, with 35% abstaining the last year. 19% having sex several times per year, 25% doing it once or twice per month, and 4% having sex several times a week. Half of lesbians report no sex with a partner for six months or more, compared with 35% of gays and 27% of bisexuals, end quote. Quote, LGBTQ Americans are often described as a community, and historically, LGBTQ people have faced similar types of discrimination for failing to meet strict gender norms. But the experiences of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people can be starkly different, as this poll reveals. When a bisexual man in Texas was asked what it meant to be LGBTQ, he responded, quote, I'm not trying to be a part of that movement, however I don't knock them for that, end quote. A lesbian in New Hampshire felt differently and said she's, quote, part of a vast, beautiful community that has an incredibly rich history, even though there are people who would like to erase it, end quote. On the topic of religion, 41% of this community that supposedly hates God was actually Protestant, Catholic, or other Christian, and 4% were Jewish. Another older survey was done from 2007 to 2008, using over 9,000 nationwide phone interviews. Roughly 8,500 members of the sample were straight, and 280 were gay. It found similar numbers, with 70% of homosexuals self-identifying as Christian, with 40% saying they are, quote, absolutely committed to the Christian faith, end quote, and 60% describing their faith, Christian or otherwise, as a very important part of their life. This hardly sounds like a group of cabal-like, animalistic, god-hating people. Wrong again, Maddie. Claim 7. This image proves the goal of the LGBTQ community is to have sex with children. This is a sign that recently came out from the LGBT. And the sign says, love is age and gender blind. So in case you missed it, they are coming after the children. Their goal is not just to uh, have sexual relations with each other, it's also to have sexual relations with children. That's their goal. But of course, these are the people that want to tell us that the Bible is incorrect. The people that can't even figure out what gender they are are the same people that are going to tell us and come after your kids, your children, that were created in the image of God, and say they're not normal. You know, they, they need to accept uh, who they really are, and they need to be confused about their gender. Look, stop spewing your confusion with yourself on the little children. At its face, this looks like it might be a credible claim. After all, this image explicitly shows support for pedophilia and has the logo of the LGBT Foundation at the bottom. And the foundation is, in its own words, a, quote, nationally significant charity firmly rooted in our local communities of Greater Manchester, end quote. But the image is faked. 
Multiple images linking LGBTQ rights and pedophilia were circulating online in 2020. These images promoted the idea that a letter P was being added to the LGBT acronym to represent acceptance of pedophilia. This ended up prompting an investigatory piece by the news outlet USA Today. They reached out to multiple well-known groups advocating for the LGBTQ community. Rich Ferraro, chief communications officer for GLAAD, responded that neither the organization nor the LGBTQ community as a whole supports the acronym or pedophilia. He wrote to USA Today in an email, quote, No LGBTQ organization has condoned pedophilia or advocated for a P to be added to the acronym in support of pedophiles. It pains me to have to clarify that, no, the LGBTQ community does not embrace pedophilia, and LGBTP is not an acronym used or supported by the LGBTQ community, end quote. Nick Morrow, communications director for the Human Rights Campaign, also responded to USA Today, quote, The LGBTQ movement absolutely rejects any suggestion that our community is linked to non-consensual interpersonal behaviors, including the horrific actions of pedophiles, end quote. I'd like to gently point out that, once again, however, Moro is equating pedophilia with child molestation because pedophilia is not an action. Sometimes these words and their usages matter, but his point definitely got across. Lastly, Joe Nellist, communications coordinator for the LGBT Foundation, wrote to USA Today that, quote, Someone has used our logo and our website address without our knowledge or permission in a malicious attempt to smear our organization and the communities we serve, end quote. The foundation went on to write a post on their own website explicitly denouncing such images and associations, which I'll let speak for itself. In part, it reads, quote, We have been made aware of misinformation being spread on some online forums regarding LGBT foundation and pedosexuality, including an image promoting pedosexuality, with our logo and website photoshopped onto the bottom. We want to make it categorically clear that this is not in any way affiliated with us, and is false and misleading. LGBT Foundation is a charity that represents and provides services to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans people, and in no way condones the inclusion of pedophilia as a minority sexual orientation. This image was created in order to smear LGBT Foundation and the communities we serve, and to dissuade LGBT people from seeking support from us, end quote. Once again, Maddie is either ignorant or lying, because it took me less than seven minutes of web searching, I had a timer running, to get to the truth behind this image. This is just more of Maddie's bigotry mixed with the tired old THEY'RE COMING AFTER THE CHILDREN talking point that never died out after the satanic panic. So... Claim 8. It is a fact that a homosexual man would have sex with anything, including an animal or child. And you think about it, if a man would sexually touch another man, he would do it with anything, okay? It's just so gross and disgusting. But I'm sorry, I don't trust my emotions. Because my emotions can be flawed. I don't trust the way that I feel. But he would literally do it with anything. He'd do it with an animal, anything. A child, they're dangerous. And it's not just my opinion, it's a fact of statistics. It's a fact of science. If you argue, if you say, you're wrong, Matt, you're wrong, Mr. Powell, you're not arguing with me. You're arguing with a statistic that is verifiably true. CDC.gov, okay? Look it up. I've already shown the child thing is wrong. And it goes without saying that assuming everyone who is homosexual would have sex with an animal is such a reach of logic, I'm not even going to bother debunking it. This is simply a carryover from panic about gay marriage. As for the CDC claim, which Maddie simply says to look up in a piss-poor attempt to sound well-researched, well, I did look it up. And there was nothing. 
Next, she'll move on to a YouTube video as her supposed proof of the now definitively disproven LGBTQ pedophilia connection. And in case you think, well, I think you're just over the rail, you're just, you know, you're just up here rattling your cage, Matt, you don't really have any evidence for what you're saying. Okay, type in, we're coming after your children on YouTube. This is the first thing that comes up. A message from the gay community, performed by the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir. They sing a whole song, right, about how they're coming after our children. They say, we're coming after the children, we're coming after the children. We'll convert them, they said. Let's just watch the video. You think we're sinful? You fight against our rights. You say we all lead lives you can't respect. But you're just frightened. You think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked. We'll convert your children. We'll make them tolerant and fair. At first I didn't get why you'd be so scared of us turning your children into accepting, caring people, but I see now why you have a problem. Claim 9. Children are turned LGBTQ by being molested. Wait a minute, I thought that being gay wasn't a choice. But they're saying we'll convert your children. You know how they convert children? By molesting them. By abusing them. That's how they convert children. That's how people even become homosexual. Is by getting molested by one of these creeps. We were created in the image of God. And the Bible says male and female created he them. And he said be fruitful and multiply. If you're homosexual, you can't multiply. The only way you can multiply is by molesting children. And creating, like zombies, creating more child molesters. I've already done extensive research about the possible causes of trans identities in another video, which I'll link here. It's part three of my six-part educational series about trans individuals. Suffice it to say, there is no suspected link between abuse and the development of a trans identity. Rather, gender incongruence, which is essentially what causes a person to be trans, seems to have at least a partial basis in genetics or brain structure. Why or how people develop a homosexual orientation is still being debated and studied as well. In 2013 and 2014, multiple scientists exchanged multiple papers in a peer-reviewed journal called Archives of Sexual Behavior, debating whether childhood abuse, instability in the home, genetics, or other factors are the cause of homosexual orientation. Two researchers in particular strongly objected to a seeming link between childhood abuse or neglect and adult homosexual orientation, citing what they perceived as faulty research methods and reporting that, quote, previous research is inconsistent with the hypothesis that childhood experiences play a significant causal role in adult sexual orientation, end quote. And it should be noted that the researchers who kicked off the conversation by studying possible links between dysfunctional childhood experiences and homosexuality were careful to clarify their intentions in a response paper. Quote, We appreciate the thoughtful commentaries from Bailey and Bailey, 2013, and Rind, 2013, and thank the editor for the opportunity to respond. Our article addressed a sensitive issue. Persons who identify as gay, lesbian, or bisexual have been and continue to be discriminated against, both individually and institutionally. Homosexuality was a diagnosable mental disorder as recently as DSM-2. Because of this, even to ask the question of what factors contribute to sexual orientation is sensitive. Rind takes our research to imply that homosexual orientation is abnormal, pathological, or maladaptive. We do not state this, and we strongly do not believe it. Our research was conducted in the spirit of investigating individual differences in human behavior as is done with traits such as personality. We disagree with those who would apply our findings for political goals that would harm or demean persons who identify as gay, lesbian, or bisexual. However, we do not believe the fear that someone might misuse or misinterpret our findings should preclude research on the origins of sexual orientation, or on the link between sexual orientation and childhood abuse. The instrumental variable models cannot be proven. They are interpretable as causal only, with additional causal assumptions. 
We contrast here the assumptions required for our interpretation with the assumptions and implications of the alternative proposals from Bailey and Bailey, 2013, and Rind, 2013, end quote. If the experts in 2022 still can't determine the exact causes of homosexuality, I don't trust Maddie Powlett to know. Regardless of the exact factors contributing to a homosexual orientation, Maddie is wrong. People are gay without having been abused, and I've already undeniably shown that not all gay people are child abusers. Claim 10 Seeing two men kissing causes the same gut reaction as throwing up. Get this. When two men kiss each other, when we see that, it's the equivalent, scientifically, the reaction that we have is the equivalent of wanting to throw up. So no matter how much they try and normalize it, our gut reaction is to throw up. That's how gross it truly is, folks. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. This is an absurd and mind-bendingly dumb claim. If it were true, how would gay people have sex or kiss each other without constantly throwing up? I can personally attest that both are possible to do without vomiting. I'm trans, and I've banged both ways. I've had gay sex no matter how you look at it, and I didn't throw up. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice... That's nice. So, checkmate, Maddie. I decided to do minor research anyway, and found a 1996 study that measured the sexual arousal of 35 homophobic and 29 non-homophobic men when exposed to heterosexual, <laughs> male homosexual, <laughs> and female homosexual, explicit pornographic tapes. The study concluded that, quote, Both groups exhibited increases in penile circumference to the heterosexual and female homosexual videos. Only the homophobic men showed an increase in penile erection to male homosexual stimuli. The groups did not defer an aggression. Homophobia is apparently associated with homosexual arousal that the homophobic individual is either unaware of or denies. End quote. It should be noted that this study has a very small sample size, and that there were no self-identifying homosexuals in the study. So saying, everyone who hates gays is gay, or that all homosexuals are self-haters, are not fair conclusions to draw. But it seems strongly homophobic people tend to be turned on by gay porn. And basic critical thinking and just this study are enough to debunk Maddie's absurd claim here. Claim 11. Defining yourself by your sexuality is predatory. If you define yourself by your sexuality, that means that you are a predator. What if we went around saying, this is my sexuality? Wouldn't that be a predatorial thing to do? That's very predatorial. Yet somehow the LGBT gets away with it, because they're standing up for equality. Defining yourself by your sexuality is not predatory. This is for three main reasons. One, for most people, it is an incredibly important part of who they are. Two, talking about sex or your sexual desires does not equate a desire to harm others. Three, sex in itself is not a bad or disgusting thing. In American society, only heterosexual orientation and stereotype-conforming gender presentations are safe from people like Maddie. She sees anyone who bucks against what she sees as acceptable as evil and degenerate. She describes simply revealing that queer people exist and are normal as an ideology that is coming after the children, because she wants all children to be heterosexual and cisgender. Trans and gay people, queer people in general, don't fit with Maddie's worldview. She hates them. For this reason, she doesn't want anything related to gender or sex, especially anything related to LGBTQ people, talked about in public, the media, or in schools, 
She doesn't want kids to learn who they are or embrace ideas that could lead them to express themselves in ways that are totally healthy, acceptable, and normal, but that don't align with what Maddie sees as moral. But they're pushing it everywhere, and I'm nearing the close. They're pushing it in cartoons. Arthur, one of my favorite shows growing up, now is pushing this ideology that you can have two men that get married. I'm sorry, marriage is between a man and a woman by definition. They're talking about this in schools today, that you have to teach your kids sex education. No, they need to learn biology, basic anatomy, cosmology, geology. Those are the things that they should be thinking about and not sex education, okay? But look at this, they want to also include the LGBTQ, right? They want to make it out like the LGBT is somehow a group of heroes. The LGBT history curriculum will now be taught in Illinois schools. You know what? I think maybe we should teach LGBT history in schools. The LGBT history that said when they surrounded Lot's house that God rained down fire and damnation upon them. Because that's what will happen if we allow ourselves to be associated with an organization such as the LGBTQ. But since schools are requiring this to be taught, we have to stand against it. We have to stand in opposition to the LGBT. The people that can't even figure out what gender they are are the same people that are going to tell us and come after your kids, your children, that were created in the image of God, and say they're not normal. You know, they, they need to accept uh, who they really are and they need to be confused about their gender. Look, stop spewing your confusion with yourself onto little children. If you're confused with what gender you are, if you can't figure that basic life thing out, don't spew your confusion with yourself onto other people. Go back in the closet. One preacher said one time, the reason that the queers came out of the closet is because there weren't enough men on the other side of the closet to keep them in. And that's true. So Maddie portrays even talking about your sexuality as predatory, because in her view, the only acceptable sexuality is heterosexuality, and it shouldn't be talked about. She apparently ascribes to a Paul Cameron-esque contagion model of homosexuality, because she falsely thinks that somehow homosexual orientation is spread through molestation. There are healthy and age-appropriate ways to talk about gender and sex, not every subject is appropriate for every age, but being proud of who you are, talking about who you are, or revealing the existence of queer people are not inherently predatory things like Maddie claims. She is wrong. Flame 12. No gay gene exists. The study of nearly half a million people closes the door on the debate around the existence of a so-called gay gene. The gay gene does not exist. People say, it's natural. It's just part of who I am. It's, it's part of, I was born this way. No, you weren't. In fact, PBS and the FBI, the CIA, all did research. And they all spent millions of dollars looking for this gay gene, and they couldn't find it. Because it's not there, because it doesn't exist, because it's not natural. There is no single gene responsible for a person being gay or a lesbian. That's the first thing you need to know about the largest genetic investigation of sexuality ever, which was published Thursday in Science. The study of nearly a half million people closes the door on the debate around the existence of a so-called gay gene. In its stead, the report finds that human DNA cannot predict who is gay or heterosexual. Sexuality cannot be pinned down by biology, psychology, or life experiences, this study and others show, because human sexual attraction is decided by all these factors. Claim 13 Homosexuality is not natural. But they say we're born this way. No, you're not. CIA did research, FBI did research, PBS did research. They all came back and said it's not natural. We don't know why people are queers. Since it's not natural, since everybody knows that it's not a fact that people are born this way, how did they get that way? First of all, I'd like to point out that homosexuality is, by definition, natural, because it occurs in nature. That actually makes sense. Hundreds of non-human animals have homosexual interactions, though these interactions are common in only a few species. In fact, homosexual encounters had been documented in almost 450 different species as of 1999, over 20 years ago. And this is not simply a case of hormonal males playing or practicing for sex with females later. Both male and female animals engage in homosexual sex to different levels. For many species, it is rare, but for some, like bottlenose dolphins and bonobos, homosexual activity is quite common. 
Now, with that out of the way, look, Maddie, PBS didn't do the research. They reported on the research. So obviously, you didn't even bother to read the fucking article. As far as the FBI goes, it seems they kept tabs on suspected homosexuals, according to relatively untrustworthy websites, but I can't verify that. It seems likely, given the rampant homophobia in the United States' past, and that still runs here today. The CIA definitely had deep homophobia running within it, but they didn't do research, like Maddie says. I found a released document from 1980 that is absolutely absurd, titled Homosexual Investigations. It begins with the sentence, There are few, if any, types of personnel investigations which are more complex, more sensitive, or more specialized than the investigation of homosexuals. It furthermore goes on to say that One of the most common mistakes made by the average person is the conviction that he can recognize a homosexual on sight. This is similar to recognizing a communist. The insanity only goes deeper. Like a horrific brain worm of utter absurdity, it seems to have completely dug its way into the mind of the writer. He is convinced that not only do gay men have some type of secret Illuminati-like society, but also that simple terms for sexual identity are actually passwords to determine who other members are. Our subject is intimately acquainted with a life totally unknown to society in general. He has his own language, his own social customs and mores. He reacts acutely to certain words, certain physical habits, certain affectations of dress. These he knows instinctively. Their existence he will deny almost to his last breath. The homosexual has passwords or auditory signals with which to test a chance acquaintance. As in the field of narcotics investigations, the investigator of homosexuals must know the proper language before attempting any close contact or pretext operations. Here are some of the popular terms of today's homosexual society. Gay. This remains as the most common term in the deviant's vocabulary. Gay means homosexual. It is used to describe people, places, favorite hangouts, parties, and groups. Any use of the word is significant, and it may be used as a test by one homosexual to see if a stranger reacts to it properly. Straight. This word means normal, not homosexual, and the opposite of gay. Bi. Bisexual. Interested equally in homosexual and heterosexual activities. The question, are you gay, straight, or bi, has been used with marked success in interviews of suspected homosexuals. Because of its odd wording, any reaction or recognition of its true meaning will tell an investigator that the person he's interviewing is probably a homosexual. Those are but a few. There are many others. One of the recently popular introductory remarks is, Aren't you Jack from the North? This question varies as to name and area, but it is always phrased the same way. The other party is supposed to answer, No, I'm Joe, or any other name, from the North. The word North, or South, East, West Coast, etc., is the code word. It means... Homosexual. The person asking the question knows at once from the response whether the other person is or is not homosexual, and whether continued conversation may be profitable. Wow. It goes without saying that this is a level of psychosis almost beyond parody and can be ignored from here on out. Claim 14. Homosexual people don't want committed relationships. And you remember about 15 years ago, 10 years ago, right? They came out and they said, well, we just want to have gay marriage. Remember that? Remember how they said, we want to just be married because we want this commitment. 
These statistics show that there was never about commitment. In fact, 98% of homosexuals have had sex with more than 50 partners. So are they all about marriage? Are they all about commitment? 28% of homosexual men had sexual relations with over a thousand partners. Even the world would blush at that. Even normal sleep around type people would blush at that. But, you know, they, they ruled that Supre the Supreme Court ruled that somehow we're going to make this marriage that's defined as between man and woman legal for man and man. And so they legalized it. But look at this. In marriages across America today, 75% 70, uh, of straight men say that they're faithful in marriage. They did a statistic. They said they're faithful. About 86% of women say they're faithful in marriage. You know how many homosexuals are faithful in their marriage? 4%. These numbers are deceptively presented and come from a 1979 study done by Alan P. Bell and Martin S. Weinberg. The study surveyed homosexual people, mostly men, in the San Francisco Bay Area, and is where these extremely high partnership numbers come from. But it should be noted that the recruiters got their respondents from the following sources. 1. Public advertising, such as newspapers, homosexual organization publications, and, quote, various business establishments that had a considerable homosexual clientele, end quote. 2. Gay bars. 3. Personal contacts, such as friends of people who had heard about the study and people from private parties attended by the recruiters. 4. Gay baths, 8 in particular, which were strong gathering places for a hookup culture and included so-called orgy rooms. 5. Homosexual organizations via their meetings, discussion groups, parties, etc. 6. Were mailing lists, including homosexual organizations and businesses who gave permission to use their mailing lists. The mailings were sent to the lists of two bars, one private club, one bookstore, seven organizations, and a colleague of the researchers. 7. Private bars, including those open after 2 a.m. Males exclusively were recruited from this source. And 8 public spaces, including men's rooms, hotels, parks, beaches, etc. Recruiting in these spaces was deliberately done during the most active cruising hours, when gay men would be looking for a sexual hookup. In the end, 61 men from these public sources responded to the survey. In total, 979 homosexual individuals were interviewed, Combine the 61 men recruited from public cruising locations and 91 from gay baths who were regularly hooking up and likely with strangers. It is easy to see how they skewed the number of partners the study found the average gay person to have. Indeed, the authors themselves point out that the numbers they find should not be generalized to the wider population. Quote, Use of these tests is often based on the assumption of random sampling from a larger population of interest, and is generally used by researchers to make inferences about that larger population. We do not claim to have drawn representative samples of all homosexual and heterosexual adults in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we do not believe that it is appropriate to make inferences to these larger populations or beyond them. However, we do report the probability levels these tests provide. For our purposes, these statistics only provide an occasional benchmark or index to the magnitude of a difference that exists in a sample of a particular size." End quote. So, the study authors never claimed, nor intended, to have their numbers encapsulate the entire homosexual population, and they specifically point this out. Their respondents were heavily weighted by men into casual hookups in public locations. They also had a relatively low number of female and black respondents. But these statistics, reporting extraordinarily high numbers of partners for the average homosexual, are used by people like Maddie's source, Matt Slick, to bash homosexuals as philanderers. I personally don't care how many people you sleep with, as long as both parties are consenting and aware of any STIs. But it annoys me that, once again, it seems people like Maddie have to either misrepresent data or outright lie in order to stake their claims and fight against the LGBTQ community's attempts to be accepted. Furthermore, I really don't give a damn about this whole being faithful in marriage thing. Have sex with whom you want as long as everyone is consenting. That includes married people.
Maddie doesn't give us a source for this 96% of gays are unfaithful claim anyway. She only tells us the ethereal they did a study. What exactly defines faithful? When was the study done? Where was it published? Was it peer-reviewed? For all I know, faithful was defined as not having sex outside of marriage. In which case, I'm not faithful because I'm in a long-term relationship, but we agreed to be non-monogamous. Or maybe faithful was defined as biblical marriage, in which case almost all gay people were automatically disqualified because gay marriage isn't biblical. We don't know because Maddie doesn't give us any info. You fucking goddamn fucker. What the fuck's your problem? My patience is beginning to wane. So... Claim 15. Homosexual people lead the world in disease spread. And why would you associate with a group of people that leads the world in disease spread? Think about it. Homosexuals are 350 times more likely to get AIDS than normal people, okay? But yet we should, oh, it's something to just celebrate. Celebrate pride. I'm not going to celebrate disease, folks. I'm not going to celebrate with a bunch of pedophiles. And people, Christians, will often get mad at me and say, Brother Powell, you just really crossed the line here. You've really gone over the top. No, you're going, you know where you're crossing the line is when you stand with the LGBT. And you stand with the very group of people that leads the world in pedophilia and AIDS and disease spread. That is what is really denigrating America today. LGBT folks, you're at least 171 times more likely to get AIDS. I'm not going to stand with a group of people. I'm not going to stand with Pride Month. I think that we should be humble. But look at this. Sexually transmitted diseases and traumatic problems in homosexual men. Look, they receive in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. Look. One hundred and seventy-one times? Three hundred and fifty times? Which one is it, Maddie? What are your sources? Men who have sex with men are twenty-two times more likely than the general population to get HIV, the cause of AIDS, according to a United Nations report from 2019. In that same year, 69% of new HIV diagnoses were among gay and bisexual men. It's important to note, however, that these men were also very likely to know about their disease and take it seriously. In that same year, 85 out of every 100 gay and bisexual men with HIV knew they were infected, and 68 out of every 100 were virally suppressed through medication. That means they have almost no risk of transmitting the virus to a non-infected sex partner. So, while HIV infection chance is much higher among gay men than average, Maddie is grossly embellishing it to unbelievable proportions. Given Maddie's previous conduct, I ascribe this to hate-mongering. Now to disease spread. To which disease are you referring, Maddie? Hepatitis A? Malaria? HIV? Rabies? In 2019, gay and bisexual men accounted for 25,552 of the 36,801 new HIV diagnoses in the United States. Just Lassa fever, a rat-borne virus in Africa, is responsible for between 100,000 and 300,000 infections annually. Maddie is going to have to bring some seriously solid numbers that cover all worldwide diseases for me to believe this drivel she's claiming. But I highly suspect she doesn't have them. Plus, she's stupid enough to think that getting homosexual people out of here, whatever that might mean, would somehow end both child molestation and disease spread as a whole. It's the right thing to do to put the homosexuals out of the land. Get them out of here. Because we don't want any more molestation. We don't want any more disease spreading. I'm tired of it. I hear about it all the time. As far as for the study Maddie shows, sexually transmitted diseases and traumatic problems in homosexual men, that's simply going over the many possible medical issues that may result from sexual contact between two men. Its abstract concludes that, quote, Physicians can best help their homosexual patients by accepting them and their relationships non-judgmentally and by understanding their special health needs, end quote. I'm absolutely convinced Maddie doesn't even read these fucking things. I'll wrap this up in part three. That chunk of Maddie's seminar is all about drag queens, trans people, and her imaginary friend making people go crazy. But the theme of her being a bigoted asshole continues throughout. That's all for now. 
I'm Willow the Wendigo, bidding you farewell. Wherever you are, I hope you have a lovely night's sleep. And remember, you're always welcome in the Deadwood. <laughs>